Hey everybody, welcome back to... No, no, this is an animation pilgrimage. Hey, welcome <laughs> to a movie review that we just went and saw. It's been a while since we've done one of these. I know! <laughs> We're, we're just... I'm like, I'm like, wait, how do we start an episode that's not Animation Pilgrimage? I don't know, we just kind of start into it. We don't have, like, an official entrance to these, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, we just, the last time we saw Leap was, like, a month ago? Yeah, I think so. It feels like mm, two or three months ago. This year is getting long. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. And rem yet the, the end is not get insight for no, movies. No, no, we we've still, still got, got a like, lot. We've got ponies, we've got Ferdinand, we've got uh, Coco. I feel like there's at least one other movie in there. There's gotta be. I don't know. It can't just be those three. I feel like there's at least four or five. I don't know. Either way, we st we're still gonna be watching movies up through December. So, uh, this is only September. We got a ways to go. Yeah. Hi, hello. We just went and saw <laughs> Lego, Lego Ninjago, Ninjago or, or as I've been calling it, Mega Bloks uh, Samurai Start. No, I added the start. You you came up with the Mega Block Samurai. Okay, and fine. I was like, Mega Block Samurai Forward, and then you're like, No, Start works better. I'm like, Start. <laughs> So I still came up with the start. No, it was my idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay, okay, okay. So, so we're gonna start with non spoilers. Yeah. Then we'll get into the trailers, which No, we won't. There wasn't no anything. Trailers. Yeah, there was yeah. nothing to talk no about. No trailers, trailers and then we'll talk into spoilers. Yeah. But but we'll warn you before we go into spoilers. Um So This movie has a tone problem. What no. uh, I don't think you understand, Tennille. Those seven writers and those 15 script people, they all had very clear ideas of what this movie was supposed to be. A real unified vision, you might say. Yeah, a real divided mess. <laughs> No, 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 Sean, we're being sarcastic. Oh, right. It d divided... Harmony. H har harmonized... Harmonious. Dissonance. Dissonance. That's... You, you said the same thing. I... Uh... <laughs> yeah, this movie didn't work out terribly well. Not to say that it was bad. It was still enjoyable. Yeah, nothing in this movie is downright horrible or bad. Like... I even say like this was still a pretty good time and still better than a lot of the other movies we've seen this year. Granted, that bar is not very high because most of the movies we've seen this year have been awful. So, yeah. so this is one of those middling movies of, oh, I mean, I was hoping it'd be better, but yeah, it was just kind of overall disappointing. Yeah, because the trailers made this look so funny. <laughs> the trailers were so good. <laughs> I've you just really love that bad blood. I do. It was such a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not in the movie. And it's not even in the movie. Oh, I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be in the movie because that mm -hmm. was obviously like a trailer joke. Yeah. But okay, let's just talk a little bit about that because I don't think this is a spoiler talking about like the trailers. The movie's completely different than the trailer. Yeah, like... That's not a spoiler. You know the scene where Lloyd's on the dragon and and Garmadon is like... And they actually have that scene where it's like, Dad? The Lloyd? That scene doesn't happen in the movie. It takes place Somewhere on else a completely, completely different... different and much later. Much later and does not have like the same emotional impact as it does in the trailer yeah no. which is just kind of like oh that's too bad it just kind of happens in the movie as compared to the trailer where it's like oh <gasps> what right and then um there's another trailer where the mom is giving the backstory on how oh yeah and that's well, completely different yeah too. like uh, that we'll have to talk about in spoilers but, yeah, but that is not in the movie yeah his parents backstory is completely different than what it is in the movie. Why? I don't know. Probably because 15 people made it. 
de decided how this movie is going to be done. I mean, you know, like, that that kind of thing has been around for a while where, where you know, like, Pixar's done it and Disney's done it, where they make scenes that... Encompass that the sell idea. the movie, yeah. but, but aren't actually in the movie. But this d does not feel like that. This feels more like... They made this the trailer. Was, this was the movie, mm -hmm. and they made a trailer for that, and then the movie went through rewrites and had to write in things that were still from those trailers. Yeah. 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 So, should you go see it? I don't know. I really don't know. Because I don't know if there's a lot more we can talk about. If you're really into, like, Lego Ninjago, um... I mean, like I have only... Martial arts films. Yeah, I only have, like, a passing knowledge of Ninjago to begin with. Mainly because my younger brother was heavily into it. Mm -hmm. But I know they only draw ideas from it and concepts and base characters. But none of the voice actors that... Are the same our, characters are, are act completely different. I was about to say like are because I don't know anything about Ninjago. Mm -hmm. Like are the main seven characters the yes. same as from the show? They're the same characters in name and color scheme and slightly personality. S no, no. Ba maybe vaguely. Okay, but like the Ice Guy is a robot. In the movie, he makes robot jokes non-stop. In the original animated stuff that they had for Ninjago, no. He's more so like, I'm a robot. Why am I a robot? Because he starts the, move, the show without realizing he's a robot. Mm. And it's something that he comes to terms with throughout the show, and then he's like, embraces it or something, yada, yada, yada. I don't think the writing on that was terribly great, but it's one of those things that it had story arcs for all the different characters, and, well, and it had, Lloyd oh. wasn't even in the original. Oh. Lloyd came around, like, halfway through as this random, anno annoying, obnoxious kid compared to all the adult ninjas. Oh. So they're all aged to be in high school in this movie, uh -huh. which, sure, fine, okay, whatever. So, yes, the characters' names and the basic element powers and stuff like that, sure. As far as adapting its own thing, it's, it's not great. It's like, yeah, this is Ninjago in the sense that we completely reset Ninjago. Okay. Is essentially how it is. Okay. I mean, I, I didn't know anything about Ninjago, mm -hmm. but just going... The original Ninjago was set in feudal Japan. Well, yeah, I mean, they probably wanted to keep more to the Lego universe I know at some, that they've set up. Well, yeah, I know at some point the Ninjago show got into Ninjago City, but I have no idea when or where. I somehow missed that part. It was somewhere between when they were fighting the snake people and then this. Okay. <laughs> Again, well, it's all over the place and weird. I, I mean, anyway, <laughs> whatever. Uh... uh I guess that's something that this... I don't know how to feel about this. I really don't. I, I kind of know how to feel about this, and it's not great. Mm -hmm. It's, like I said, it's mostly disappointment. Um, it's definitely the worst of the three Lego movies. Like... By far. This one just had the hardest time finding an identity. Yeah. Because, you know, like... The, the original, the Lego movie, whenever they went to different, like, universes in mm -hmm. the Lego Multiverse. universe, yeah, it was like each one had its own identity. Yes. And Ninjago City just felt very generic. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be like... And even, like, the Batman yeah. Lego movie, like, that, it was Arkham City, but Lego... It, yeah, it knew how to encompass... The whole city had yeah. character, and this, like... It's just, like, vaguely Tokyo... It's vaguely San Francisco. 
Right, but San Francisco is better than this, right? Uh, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> like, that has more personality as a city than, than this did. Um, and everything, like, like the characters you were talking about. The characters in this the, movie the, just have... They're one-liners. Yeah, the the Ninjago characters, it feels like at the beginning, and it could just be because they're, like, bringing traits over and stuff from the TV show. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know anything about the TV show, when they introduce these characters, I'm like, okay, they set that character up for an arc. Okay, they set that character up for, for like, a, a running joke or something like that. And none of these things ever really come back. No. Like... No, it's like, oh, this is this character, this is that character, this is that character, these are their tropes, this is the only thing they're going to do the whole movie. Right. Because all of the ninjas, except for Lloyd and, like, Armadon and stuff, because that's who the movie's about, the extra ninjas don't have character other than, we're a trope. Yeah, we're token this, we're token that, we're... Yeah. We're token girl. Yeah, we're token girl. We're token scared one. We're, We're token, token robot. Robot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am totally normal human. Yeah. So, I, I don't think this movie was terribly great. It did have some, like, it did have some genuinely, like, really good jokes. You know, yeah. the Lego team still has does a great job with jokes. Although, I did feel like the jokes were not hitting as much as they did in Batman or in the Lego movie. I would agree. Yeah, they just... More of the jokes fell flat compared to those two movies. And more often than not, those jokes that went flat ended up coming back as a running joke. And you're just uh, like, oh. You're like, no, guys. I know this is probably because you've made three, like, you made two movies this year, so you're probably stretched really thin. Mm hmm. Please don't do what you did with all of your video games. Stop making so many. Take your time. Yeah. I know you won't because you're all about that merchandising, yo, because you're Lego. That's what you do. Right. But your first two movies were really solid. Mm-hmm. The, the, the Lego Batman one, not as much as, you know, the first one. But, like... Your movies are... It was still really <sighs> solid. You're going on a negative slope right now, and... It's speeding up. Please stop. <laughs> yeah, just... Like we said, this movie isn't bad. But it forewarns possible terribleness but, in the but future. as you watch it, you can see the cracks. You can see where it's like, oh, We had this three team, different movies. This team worked on these scenes, and this team worked on these scenes, and these two teams did not talk to each other yeah. at all. Uh, okay. 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 So, with all that negativeness out of the way, I guess we will give you this brief intermission time to get out if you're afraid of spoilers and are still planning on seeing this movie, which, if you want to, go ahead. You'll probably still enjoy quite a bit of it. Yeah, but if you're expecting it to be, like, the same quality as either the Lego Batman or... The original Lego or movie? Or the original Lego movie... I sadly I don't think you're gonna get that. You're yeah. still gonna get a good time. It's just not gonna be as good as the first two movies. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that has been your buffer time. We are going to get into spoilers now. Starting with the very beginning of the movie. Uh huh. Uh, this was the foretelling point for me uh -huh. that this was going to go bad. Uh huh. So, Tanil, how did this movie start? Well, Sean, I could tell you about 10 seconds after the movie started, I heard a kid in the audience say, Mom, what movie are we watching? Because they were completely lost and they didn't understand what was going on. That's because this movie starts with live action. Yeah. You know, that terrible, terrible trope that I thought we had gotten away from in the 90s. <laughs> This is a 90s yes. thing. You know what? That's exactly what it felt like. Oh, uh, yeah. And it I, was bad then, and it's not good to bring back now. I mean, uh, I mean, I get why they did it, because, like, the original Lego movie ended with live action. Yeah, but then Spoilers it never came, the original but then it never came up in the second movie. Right. Not once. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, when they started off with live action, I I kind of did a double take, like, oh, what? No, please don't. <laughs> I, I'm just sitting here like, guys, don't, no, don't, don't do this. Don't, don't you do this. I'm giving, I'm throwing you a bone. Please grab the bone and run away. Start this movie over. Just <laughs> Luckily, the, the live action segment doesn't, like, take up very much in the movie. Like, total, it's like 10 minutes long. The live action that's segments. exaggerating. I would say it's like three or four minutes tops. For all of it. Again, it's very minimal, but it bookends the movie and there's no reason for it to be there. Yeah. It it, it does nothing other than, oh, we actually got literal Jackie Chan to do this one thing that he failed at multiple times. Haha, <laughs> let's look at it. In the ending, just like we did with the Nut Job 2... Because we got Jackie Chan, so we got to show off that we got Jackie Chan. Guys. I'm so sorry, Jackie Chan. You keep getting all these shitty roles. <laughs> Please. Please, Jackie. Stop taking the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. But just... The whole reason they do this live action segment is because... It starts the movie off, there's this kid, you hear kids outside laughing, this kid walks into this, like, antique china shop. Mm-hmm. Shop. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's, like, all sad, and you tell, like, oh, okay, kids outside have been picking on him, or whatever. Um, but then as he, like, walks in, the shop is, like, all cluttered, and he accidentally knocks something over. Oh, he does not accidentally knock something over. Right! He deliberately karate chops the fist of this male armor, which makes a thing fall over, which sends this is bulls all, flying. Like really dumb. 90s kids films dumb. <laughs> uh-huh. And then Jackie Chan is there and he catches all the bulls. Yeah. And then he's like, don't do that. Don't do that. Now let me tell you the story about Ninja Legos. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, essentially, it's a segue, right? The segue is terrible. <laughs> He's like, "What you got there?" And it's a yeah, kid has a this. super beat up Lloyd figure who's missing the arm. Like, did you did you throw your Lego into a lawnmower numerous what? times? What did it, you is do? This to like, this? Is the movie trying to imply that the kids outside? Beat the shit out of your Lego? <laughs> Either way, that movie is gone if that was part of the movie at some point. So it makes no sense here. And Jackie Chan is like, oh, he doesn't so look so bad. Look, and he pulls out a brand new shiny, like, Lloyd figure that's in the ninja garb. And like, he's fine. And the kid's like, wow. <laughs> now let me tell you this story also, as I pull out a wooden master Lego. Yes, yes. He has a Lego of the made of wood. Of the sensei character. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> what I wanted, what, what really got me though, was this kid who's like, no, he isn't anything. He's just a kid. He can't do anything. Okay. I don't know about you, but what kid, even if they are depressed because they get bullied all the time, what kid fantasizes his toys to be total losers like they are? Uh, I mean, I can see that, but the total loser would have awesome, cool powers. But this kid is but this kid romanticizing, do that. He's he's romanticizing, romanticizing the part where he's depressed and shitty. <laughs> Right! He doesn't, like, like the kid isn't the one who comes up with the ninja stuff. It's Jackie Chan who's like, no, kid, your toy isn't a loser. He's awesum. Have you heard the true story behind the true story of Lego Ninjago? Jago. Literally <laughs> saying the words Lego Ninjago out loud in this movie. Oh, God, it's so stupid. <laughs> we haven't even gotten five minutes in. <laughs> Okay, but but honestly, like, <laughs> after, after that, that, it switches to Lego stuff. Yeah, they, they switch to Lego stuff, and the movie picks up a bit. Um, and then we spend... I, I, okay, this movie is cleanly segmented into, like, three, three pieces yeah, yeah, of completely like, different stuff. You, you see the three-act structure really well in this movie. 
that's not a good thing. Yeah, and it's not a good thing in this movie. No, it's a three-act structure of three different writing teams. Because it feels like these were parts of different movies at some point and they were ham-fisted together. At least the middle part feels like it wasn't supposed to be with the other two parts. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean. And yet the middle part feels like the best part. Uh, Yeah, I would love to see more movie of just the middle part. Yeah. Yeah, but the but the beginning act and the third act have like a lot of issues. Yeah, so the beginning um, act and but, the end act are in the city. But what I was gonna say things. is that like because there's such a tone problem mm-hmm. in this movie, the, the it's hard to critique the tone of a Lego movie because like it's a Lego movie. It's self aware. The tone is supposed to be kind of weird, but here it just. Like, that's a that's a thin line to walk, and here it's just not walking it. Mm-hmm. Because, like, the Lego movie has to balance that line where it's like, oh, we are, like, we're making fun joke jokes and pop culture references. Oh, now, like, we have to talk about, like, the character's problems and do character development. And, oh, now we're back to the jokey jokes. And now we gotta go back to, you know, Batman's depression about being alone. And, oh, back to the jokey jokes. Yeah. <laughs> and and this movie's trying to do that, too. And, you know, I said in the Batman review that I found that to be the weakest point of mm-hmm. that movie is when it was trying to take itself seriously. Yes. I was like, please... Just get back to the jokey jokes. This movie feels long when you are stopping to do these emotional moments. The end of this this, movie was horrendously long. This movie has points where it's like, we're doing jokey jokes, and then we ah, screech to a stop because we... We gotta have an emotional scene. We've gotta... We've got to have a close-up of the Lego's face, and he's sad. (laughs) Sad Legos telling the backstory of how he met your mother. Yeah. And it's like... This is going on for a really long time. Why has this not been expounded in a different way? Speaking of which, the backstory of how the parents met is completely different from the trailer. The trailer mm-hmm. makes it seem as though Garbodon was a pretty okay, cool dude, and then the mom found out he was an evil warlord. Right. No, she knew he was an evil warlord from the beginning. Which, okay, they make this really unclear when they go into the backstory in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, they say that she is also, like, this samurai ninja warrior Who's lady. mentioned once before this. Yeah, the the water ninjago girl. Is the token like, girl character. It's like, it's she's like, my idol. That's um, all we hear about her until the end. It's like, oh yeah, that girl, she's my idol. No reason why. Don't yeah. know who it is. Mm-hmm. Whatever. What? I don't know if this character exists in the other ninjago stuff. No, but it doesn't they work say here. That, okay, blah, 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 blah. they say that they like Garmadon's uh, narrating this. He's like, we met on a battlefield as I was pillaging this village, and there's no village. There's no village, and it's just a hellscape fighting, of lava. Yeah, and they're fighting. They're fighting each other. Yeah, but then they team up. They for team some up. Reason. So. Was she And yet they still fight each other? Yeah. I don't know. I don't. Also, why is it in this backstory, Garbodon has skeleton army, but in the present he has fish people? Yeah, he's like Which obsessed was... with like sharks and stuff. Fish people is never Garbodon's thing. In the show? No. He uh-huh. was all about them skeletons. And then he kind of got ostracized because he lost. And then there was a whole arc with snake people that were the villains. I don't know. It was weird. But Garmadon was having a redemption arc at that point. So it didn't really matter. I don't even know if it went anywhere. Hmm. I know a surprisingly large amount of this now that I think about it. (laughs) Holy crap. (laughs) And this is just for me like over like watching bits of it over my brother's shoulder. (laughs) Should just get him him in here and have him explain everything. 
Garmanon was probably my favorite character, but probably one of the most inconsistently written oh, in this movie. Oh, yeah. He would, had no consistency. I'm evil for evil's sake. Now I'm like, oh, I'm the father figure. Oh, I'm getting to know my son again. Right. And now I'm evil, except I'm not. I want to be the hero. And no, I'm actually still a villain. And hey, I'm a father figure again. And none of this meshes very well. I'm just a guy with four arms. and I'm <laughs> four arms. I cry fire. It's fine. <laughs> Are you okay? The crying fire. Okay. The crying fire is is <laughs> the symbol for the for the tonal problems in this movie. <laughs> They're yes. trying to have an emotional moment. And the main character between father and son, and he's like, "Dad, I'm sorry. I said that I didn't w that I wish that you weren't my dad." And he's like, "You really mean it?" And he cries, "Fire!" He cries a fire tear, which this is supposed to be a completely genuine, heart touching moment where you know parents in the audience look at their kids and they go, "Yeah, Billy, I'm glad I'm your dad." or something, you know. Uh -huh. This is supposed to be like the emotional moments where parents are like, yeah, this is why I came to this movie and brought my kids or whatever. And kids are like, oh, get back to the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it in this work. movie, <laughs> Garmadon cries fire. And so it hurts the all inside emotional of integrity is gone. <laughs> And at this point, he'd been eaten by the cat. Spoilers, the cat is the main villain, like an actual I mean, real cat. that was in the trailers. Yeah, but it wasn't figured Although, out that that was the main villain. The cat the... is in the... Uh, that was another thing I was going to say, is the cat isn't shown as a villain in the trailers until, like, some of the more recent trailers. So I'm wondering mm -hmm. if, like, the whole cat thing... Because I remember when we were seeing trailers for this movie, there was, like, the first trailer, which had the... Mom telling the backstory of Garmadon and them getting together mm -hmm. and like the original confrontation scene between Lloyd and Garmadon where it's like, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. now we got bad blood. Anyways. <laughs> um, so like that was what I'm going to guess was the original or like one of the more original drafts of the movie. Mm -hmm. And then like the next trailer we got was when I was starting to get like a little like, huh? Wait, this doesn't match up with what we just saw from that last trailer. Because that's when they introduced the cat, and it also showed the scene of Lloyd's arm popping off. In, like, a Garmadon. forest scene, which had nothing to do with anything else that was going on, and why are they working together? What's going on here? Yeah. Because I'm that like... was the middle arc of the the movie, where they're, like, on an adventure to go find the ultimate weapons of ultimate, ultimate, ultimate. Yeah. Or whatever. That's a joke that comes back too often. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was not good. Mm hmm That was some 2000s bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, they late, say... Late 90s, like, like, end of the late 90s extreme yeah. stuff. It's like early 2000s rapid editing and LOL random stuff is funny, right? So, when they say the words ultimate weapon... It just goes through this flash sequence of live action bullshit with like cartoon stuff scribbled on top of it, just like boom, 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 like a guy's belly getting slapped and like someone in a horse head and just just things flying by. Obviously, random people that were standing around that are like shout at the camera quick and we'll just put shit on you. Yeah, it's like it wasn't good, and, and they, they do it twice. That... No, they do it more than twice. No, cause... they do it once. And then they do it again for the ultimate, ultimate weapon, Which... where they mirror the image so it's twice as bad. <laughs> but otherwise, the exact same. Yeah. Uh. Oof. We're making this movie out to be a lot worse than what it actually was. I mean, it's in a, it's in a similar spot as Cars, where it wasn't actually that bad, but there's a lot you can talk about because there are problems with it, and we want to point them out. So that the movie could be better. Yeah. It's one of those movies that it's on a certain level of badness that you can critique it and really dig into it and actually get functional 
information out of it as compared to a hot pile of garbage that's just where you're just like why do i even like there's I, no point i would have this to write a terrible. novel about why this is bad yeah that kind of thing or this movie was just incredibly boring and i can't talk about it because it's just so Weh. meh <laughs> Hmm. What a bad joke to bring back. I'm sorry, everyone. Okay, we're going to move on from that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the the first arc is where the show, I'm pretty sure, roughly left off with them all going to school in high school in Ninjago City. And mm -hmm. they've got the giant cool mechs and shit like that. Mm-hmm. The middle arc is they the original. They never bring the, the mechs back, which I was like, oh. Nope. I, I mean, weren't you expecting the mechs to come back? I don't know, maybe. The show started with them learning spin jitsu, which they <laughs> use as a throwaway line in this, because you know what Ninjago started as? Uh-huh. What? Little mi mini fig figures that you put weapons in their hands, you stick them on top of a top like Beyblade thing, and you spin them at each other like Beyblade. Oh. That's what this started as. You know how long that lasted? Probably not very because about it's not five 2001 hot anymore. Yeah, it lasted about five hot seconds, and they're like, okay, that was done. Now we're going to give them like robots and shit. Or like armor and better stuff we're gonna actually do something lego-y and make it so you have to build something for the uh, yeah. characters <laughs> yeah it's uh, it didn't last long but that's seriously where ninjago started uh -huh. so in the cartoon the show starts with them learning about their elemental powers and being able to summon tornadoes of elemental powers this movie acts as though these kids have never freaking done that it's like the what elemental, are elemental power, powers. The elemental powers are really dumb in this movie. Oh, they yeah, yeah, they're really dumb, and they don't come in until the very end oh, of the movie. Oh, okay, wait, okay, that's something we should talk about. Is is Lloyd's green? Okay, yeah, Lloyd is green. That's his elemental power. Of green. <laughs> of green, but no, his his rallying cry to the other ninjas. So that they all learn to use their powers. It's inside you. It's the. It's so ham-fisted and dumb. This, it was so bad. You guys can do it. Come on, just do it. Come on, I do it, guys. I believe in you. Believe Come on, do it, you. do it, guys. You can do your elemental things. Do it. It's like the the mas Is it Master Fu? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm like it's got. Something. Master Jackie Chan. Master Jackie Chan is like, I believe in you. I, I think you all can do it. But him apparently saying that he believes in them is not enough. <laughs> you gotta hear Lloyd repeat that 500 times before these guys figure out, oh yeah, I have elemental powers that I can summon ice even though I'm a robot. It's like Lloyd's like, <laughs> the power is inside you. I'm like, no shit. Master Jackie Chan said that at the beginning at of the, the movie. Beginning, he's like very casually. Very casually, he just walks up to them and he's like, you can "Water girl, you can make water." And she's like, "Oh, that's really? Cool. That's cool." <laughs> you don't say. You don't say. I don't know. Maybe you should try. Uh. <laughs> So the middle arc of this movie is them on this adventure through the middle of the forest to go find the ultimate, ultimate powers to stop the cat. Because they accidentally summon the cat with a laser pointer, which was the ultimate weapon. Mm -hmm. And this is the best part of the movie. Not because the writing has gotten any better. But because there's change of scenery and a smaller cast of characters and we can focus on the characters doing things with each other. And it had the best jokes. Yes. That is also true. Lloyd, Lloyd and Garmadon talking to each other is Gen always the best jokes. Oh, yeah. They actually understood how to have those two characters interact and they I can wish work the off whole each movie, other. Like, I wish we could cut out all the rest of the Ninjago characters mm -hmm. and just made the movie about Lloyd Garmadon. And that's it. And they're doing... With side character like Mom, side character Jackie Chan, Master Man. Yeah, and leave it at that. I know they couldn't do that because this was 
made on the Ninja Ninjago franchise, which means they had to get all the characters in there, but, but who they, cares? But they could have done something where it's like... Oh no, they're all encased they're in They're all stone captured. Or... Oh no, Lloyd has to do this by himself. Type of thing. Wow, so he better team up with his bad dad, dead man, and go <laughs> save the day. <laughs> which is essentially what they do anyways. Right. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Why didn't they just do that? And cut out the beginning part where they're already... Who knows, maybe at one point they were doing that, but the I... script probably changed. <laughs> like, one of the more enjoyable scenes about out, the, out of this whole thing is, like, the rest of the crew just kind of fucks off and does the master building thing, which is still only mentioned, like, once in this whole movie. Yeah. They're just, like, off building shit, and Lloyd can't throw. <laughs> You can't throw this things. Is, okay, this is one of those jokes where it's like, this is so stupid it works. <laughs> yeah, Lloyd never had a father figure to ta teach him how to throw things. So they're running through this village with angry guys trying to kill them all. And Garbanage is like, no, 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 throw it like this. And he's like throwing like a terrible person. And it's, oh. <laughs> a lot of times he like throws it and it goes behind him. Yeah. he lets go like top of the arc. <laughs> <laughs> or like he throws it backwards or throws it directly down or right. some thing. <laughs> so that whole scene was like the best part of this entire movie. Uh-huh. And unfortunately, like... <sighs> it doesn't once, fit the once... character of anybody. No, it really doesn't. But once they get to... um. Oh gosh, and this is another thing. Once they get to, what is it called? Like the Unstable Palace. Yeah. Which turns out to be Garmadon and Houses. the Garmadon house. And by the way, also Master Jackie Chan Fu Man is and Garmadon are brothers. That's the thing that's known. Not really a spoiler. They yeah. talk about that like in the beginning of the movie. They talk um, about it nonchalantly because that was brought up near the end of the first season or something. Who knows? But it never has any point. It doesn't they go to their childhood home, nothing. and it's not like I was waiting for, like, their parents to show up mm -hmm. and have, like, there would be some, like, meaningful interaction there. Maybe we've been watching too many episodes of BoJack Horseman. I'm just <laughs> expecting, like, emotional... Horrible ramifications of the terror. Parental abuse. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, <laughs> just something. It's like, they, they make a point to show that this is their home. But nothing is done with the fact that it's their home. Yep. Like, it serves no narrative purpose. And and back to the, the throwing thing, is this would have been a great way to end the joke with, with Garmadon saying, like, he has that line where he's like, oh, son, I should have taught you how to how to catch and yeah. then he like <laughs> and leaves which he but, does which he, he does but the rest of the bullshit going around that joke is so dumb i couldn't even enjoy that yep it's like that joke worked but not in the context of right. what was of going what on was with going the rest on. of the scene because it's supposed to be this dumb really super serious, serious oh no we thought you were on our side but you're not really on our side because you're evil still duh Tone problem. Whap. Tone problem. Smack you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> and I really wanted Garmadon to just be like that, that neener neener kind of villain guy. Uh huh. Like and and nonchalant, like he's shown in the trailers too. Well, and even how he is in the beginning, where he's like, "Oh, 16 years ago, I left this really cool jacket behind." <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could get it back. Like, I wish that character had stuck around. Yeah, but no. Garmadon was the most enjoyable character, but he had, like, five different characters. Yeah. He, he had no... And they were all enjoyable. I think it might but... just be because the voice actor did a really good job. Yeah, they were really, I was having like, a lot of fun with it. And, and his <laughs> animation was fun. Mm -hmm. You know, that's got something I gotta say, too, is I really don't feel like this movie looked as good yeah i think and a lot of it has to do with like the setting like mm -hmm. we were talking before with like ninjago city just looking kind of bland just bringing that up i think this is something this is something that i definitely noticed in the batman movie Mm-hmm. that it felt 
busy. Cluttered. Like, really yeah. busy. Which is kind of the thing that Lego's going for, but it's too much so. Because the first movie knew when to be busy and when to slow it down. Right. Like, the busyness worked in its advantage, but it still had very clear composition. Mm-hmm. Like, all the staging was really well done. And you're right, in Batman... In Batman, it started to go downhill, and this movie just felt and worse. And in Batman, I felt like some of that problem was because they were trying to adapt the lighting of a Batman movie, where it's like you have uh -huh. very bright brights and, like, just very a lot of a lot of contrast dynamic cartoon like comic book mm -hmm. like lighting and tone which so i wasn't gonna doesn't work great, great on legos yeah so i wasn't gonna hold that too much against him there but here i noticed it i just didn't bother me too much but looking at it in line with this it's like it keeps going it's still being way too busy all the time which is another reason that the middle part works so well because it's very subtle and there's not a lot going on most of the time mm -hmm. like, and for an for mm -hmm. an action like kung fu movie you don't want that much fight, shit the fight scenes are not very well choreographed or no. interesting to look at because they're just blurred legos yeah most of the time it's like i mean they're doing what they can with what they've got but it does just doesn't work most of the time. I mean, for for a big budget Hollywood film, a lot of the fighting scenes and like animation techniques that they use to to do the fighting scenes feel more like they're trying to emulate a Saturday morning cartoon mm -hmm. rather than a Hollywood feature. And it's just like, yeah, yeah, you guys. Like the most interesting and best fight in this entire movie was Garmadon and old man Fu Manchu, uh, Jackie Chan man on the bridge. Mm -hmm. And even then I'm just sitting there thinking, you know, We've seen another kung fu movie with uh, a fight on a bridge. Yeah, another animated kung fu fighting bridge scene. I want to say it starred a bunch of animals. It also had Jackie Chan. Also in had it. Jackie Chan in it in that specific scene, which was done so well. Yeah. For those who don't know, we're talking about the original Kung Fu Panda. There is a. It, in case you haven't seen Kung Fu Panda. Basic, in case you haven't seen Kung Fu Panda, there's an exquisite fight sequence on this bridge. It is amazing. Oh, mwah. <laughs> but to but just I so kept I'm thinking about the, that scene while we were watching were too, this scene. Because I was watching it and I was just like, oh this is wow, nothing. this is not as good as that, and this is like very similar. <laughs> yeah. Because it's a kung fu movie. movie. Movie, you shouldn't have reminded me about this. Yeah, on a bridge, aimed at children, and it's animated. And, I'm, oh, there's Jackie Chan. And Jackie Chan is involved. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I kept waiting. This is off on a completely different tangent, too. You know what I was talking about? The Ninjago characters, how it felt like they were going to have an arc that, yeah like set something. up some kind of arc or something especially with like the frady cat lightning dude uh-huh i was like okay they clearly set him up to be like he's got to conquer his fears and like that's a really easy character arc to do you don't even need like all you needed to do was set up i'm scared of things third act I've got to not be scared of things and do the right thing and be courageous. I'll stand up against it. Yeah. Nope, don't do that. But he never does. <laughs> and the red one is, I'm a cool guy. Just kind of mess things up accidentally. End of the movie, I'm a cool guy and I mess things up accidentally. Yeah. And then... I'm a token girl. <laughs> I'm the token girl. Oh, that's something I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like... And she's the girl. Can she be a girl and a ninja at the same time? And she makes some joke about, I was like, you don't realize what uh, century you're in right now, do you? Or something pointing out the fact is like, that's blatant tokenism and I'm not okay with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when they set that up, I'm like, okay, cool. So she's going to be a cool character. Nope. nope. 
That's all they do with it. They acknowledge that she's a token and then just keep going with it. They acknowledge that she's a token character, they acknowledge that she is not okay with being a token character, and then they just keep using her as a token character and she never brings up the fact that she's uncomfortable with it ever again. Further cementing the fact that she's a token character. You guys can't just bring up that you know that you have a token character and not do anything with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, at least there was no, like, love story or something like that. But, I mean, that's still not necessarily a compliment because, like, mm -hmm. yeah, that would have made things worse, but, like, mm -hmm. you didn't do anything good with it to begin with. It's so. like, yeah, and... Even more so, they acknowledge that, yeah, I'm the girl, so I get stuck with water. Yay. Yeah. Because that happens all the time with Lego. Mm -hmm. Like, no, seriously. Bionicle? Same problem. <laughs> the girl has the water. The guys are oh, allowed to have fire and ice and rock, and the other guy has earth. Why are there two that have earth and rock? Dodo. And then wind. We're not going to talk about Bionicle. <laughs> You're going to have to wait to go on a Bionicle tangent in Animation Pilgrimage when we get to, like, the 90s. Oh, God, it's going to take a while. Just uh, hold on. But just on a similar note, mm -hmm. Lego likes that color scheme of those six colors. Oh, green, blue... Red, red, white, black, and other. Other? <laughs> it's always that way. Uh-huh. Every single time. <laughs> Gotta have six for some reason. Six is a nice round number, right? Now let's throw in a seventh to just screw things up even more. Why do you guys have six? <laughs> Why was it six? I understand that it's not a normal... No I'm getting off on, like, a Lego tangent Yeah, now. you just need to stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, that's something I would like to see. Hmm. If they did it well. I want to see a Lego movie about Bionicle done in this style. Mm-hmm. You know they're not bringing... I, Honey, I need to break something to you. <laughs> Bionicle has been dead for years. No. You need to let it go. No, it had a resurgence briefly. No. It came back. No. It's, it's still cool. It's dead. <laughs> it's long dead. It's been buried. Before it was buried, it was shot. <laughs> uh, there, there. It's okay. I don't care. Bionicle's still cool, even if it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think we've probably talked long enough about the movie and then not the movie anymore. <laughs> As we go off on tangents about stuff non-related to it. Whatsoever. I mean, it's tangentially related because it's Lego, but... It's tangentially related because we went on a tangent. Okay, overall, compared to other movies that we've seen this year, what have we seen this year? A lot of shit, that's yeah, what. Yeah, a lot of bad movies. I would rank this above all the bad movies and below all the okay movies. <laughs> yeah, like... Let you figure out where that is. <laughs> like, okay, how would you rank this in compared to Cars 3? Because y you brought it up earlier. Mm, yeah, I think it's in a very similar spot of Cars 3, where it's probably okay, but we just had problems with it. No, okay, it's different from Cars 3. Cars 3 is probably fine, but we just don't care for Cars 3. This movie is probably worse than Cars 3, but we care more about it. Mm-hmm. So I'd say it's on an equal level. It would level. really depend just on your taste. Person to person, it's going to compare to Cars 3. i say that this movie was definitely worse than the best movies we've seen this year, which was uh, Lego Batman and Captain Underpants. Oof. Is there anything else? That's such a low bar. <laughs> I know. Both of those movies were okay. Okay. Those are okay. Those are fun. They're good. None of them were like, hmm, magnifique. These are amazing, good movies. We chose the worst year to start doing this last year. Hey, you know what? You know what? Let's end this on a positive note. We oh, didn't yes. have any trailers to talk about, so we will talk about a trailer that didn't show up in the theaters, but it just came out recently. So, you might know this guy. He's called Wes Anderson. He's 
makes a lot of art films. Lots of art films. We that actually are... haven't seen. We've because... only ever seen is one animated film. We've only seen. We're terrible. <laughs> We're terrible people that only watch animated films, so we don't watch live action <laughs> things. But Wes Anderson is a guy that likes making art films, so he made one art film once called Fantastic Mr. Fox. It's an amazing, fantastic movie. We're going to talk about it on Animation Pilgrimage eventually. You should go see it at stop motion. It's great. And Take a breath. And we love it. So you should see it. Anyways. He's but, making another movie. Yes! Another Isle of, of Dogs. Isle of Dogs. Coming out next year. So we're going to keep doing this so we can see a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Please. At least an interesting movie. Like, yeah. Oh, God. Cause to, just, Wes just Anderson watching, is so just, vicious, visually interesting to look at. Just watching that trailer was like, oh, my God. I'm going to be able to go to a theater and see a movie that, that looks isn't good. pandering to me. Yes. Like, oh, God. <laughs> I'm getting weak in the knees and I'm not even standing. Uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, but in more recent times, in... I think our next movie is in two weeks, so yeah. relatively close. Oh, speaking of movie, like, thank God it's not pandering to me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go steal My Little Pony! <laughs> the movie! Friendship is magic! Butterflies are great! TM! Pirates are cool, so we're throwing them you in know, this movie! This TM, the, honestly, the movie, the movie. The, the ponies movie is going to be interesting for us to see is like, past bronies. We're gonna be like, yeah. oh god. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we'll get into that more, but yeah, we watched Ponies for a while and then we stopped. Yeah. So you'll hear more about our feelings on all of that next time in two weeks. We'll just leave it here. We've been talking for a really long time. <laughs> it's been a while since we've done one of these. So yeah. I just want to like I mean, talk. Because <laughs> these are one of those things that we just kind of explode and let whatever we want to say out and stuff. As compared to Animation Pilgrimage, where we actually try to bring in facts yeah. and like actually dig deep into the visual aesthetic and a lot of the movies we're watching right now are all from like the 40s so they're completely different in tone you gotta and everything like, from yeah, this. Yeah, you gotta take so many things into consideration but here we can just be like blah 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 blah. Memes. <laughs> la la la. I can't even. Legos. <laughs> okay, I'm stopping this review right now. 